Hello, I'm Kaylee. I'm a social worker in the UK. So my work is um, in adult services, but a lot of the information I'm going to share will translate into children's services as well. And I've been asked to do this video to improve uh, sort of people's confidence with uh, their written skills in writing assessments and. This has come from people who are my subscribers because um, they've been able to answer the polls that I've been putting out so I would urge you to subscribe to my channel, it really helps me to know that these videos are helpful and I'm always taking on board comments that people have for what they'd like to see as well. Um, so I'd like to share some really practical tips around this element because I don't always feel like this is something that's uh, talked about in much detail. So. In terms of a key thing that you can do to improve your writing, it's definitely writing more analytically. So that's considering multiple perspectives or looking at a situation more holistically rather than just writing in a descriptive way. So rather than just sort of stating information, you're actually taking that information and forming a conclusion or making recommendations off the back of it. So that includes sort of taking on board different layers of information. Part of a way that I actually put that across is by considering different perspectives on a person's situation. So a number one way of showing a particular perspective would be the individual whose assessment you're completing at that time. It's really important that you're getting their views across. An important consideration with this is about how you're going to record that. So are you going to use a direct quotation of what they've said or are you going to rephrase it in your own words? And I think that sometimes it's important to put the direct quote of what someone said and that might not be like a massive paragraph but a snippet of something that is important and relevant to your assessment of the individual. And I guess what you choose as being relevant is, is up to you as an assessor but you get that sense of what's important to someone by listening to how they narrate their experiences and also um, when you get to know what's important to them and sort of how they explain their own life and their, their sort of world view. Um, so you have to think about the reason for your assessment in the first place. So there may be a particular thing that a person's struggling with and they may be able to tell you why they're struggling with it and that's really important to put in the assessment in their own words I'd say because often people can actually find their solutions to their own difficulties that they may be facing especially when you give them the information about the support that's available to help them and that's not always the case but it's a good way of sort of analysing the situation and showing that you're really taking on board what the person's saying. Um, but what I would avoid is just putting loads and loads of text and like irrelevant things um, for, for that assessment. I think in terms of something else that's key is other professionals views but not only stating their views but also where their views have come from so what evidence base have they got to make the recommendation that they're making. So for example um, a really good piece of evidence that you get as an adult social worker maybe from an occupational therapist and you could put that maybe they've done a functional assessment and they've determined that the person's unsafe to go out in the community and walk by themselves because they're unsteady for example, that would be really good information to put and where they've got it from um, to inform your assessment. And then something that may be less sort of relevant and maybe um, if they're making sort of a view that's they're just based on their opinion but they have sort of no evidence to back that up and um, that's something that may not be as relevant to including your assessment. And then in terms of your own professional view, it's important to avoid things like I feel this way because it just doesn't sound professional and I think we need to show that we're not just making um, our sort of assessments on the basis of a whim or like our conclusions based on no evidence. We, we consider about the information that we have available to us at the time. We can make claims about what we think um, as a result of the information but we can also make cautious claims as well so for example um, part of a conclusion may be something that you've considered so you you can consider options but for example if I was dealing with someone who was going into a care home I would need to consider whether a checklist needed to be done to consider their entitlement to NHS continuing healthcare funding I may not go forward with doing a checklist but I need to say that I've considered it and I've discounted it 
on the basis of the following. So I think it's good to know that you can actually say things you've considered that you've not gone forward with as well. And also the reason behind it. So you can draw from other knowledge bases to inform why you've come to that conclusion. So in terms of things that I might write about as well, um, it may be that I've considered whether the person could return home um, and I'm acknowledging that that would be a less restrictive option but in fact it's not possible because of the following reasons so that's like taking upon you know the, the knowledge that you may have from um, legislation and policy that says that we need to consider the, the least intrusive um, ways of supporting someone in a situation and you may bring in that you've considered like human rights legislation and things like that and I always actually um, put a statement about a legislation that I've considered. So um, when I'm cons completing assessments, I'll say, um, as part of this assessment, I've, con I've uh, carried this out under the Care Act 2014 and I've considered whether they have eligible needs. And as a result, I've making the, the following recommendations. So it's just showing that you are working within that because it can help you to sort of argue why you think a person should get a certain service. And that can be useful because um, that's really going to help that individual and show that you are putting forward a strong recommendation. In terms of using theory, I know people are interested in whether you can do use that in assessments. And I have done because I was um, advised to do so by my, my manager. Um, I know that people have different opinions on this because some people think that maybe it's not appropriate because you have to consider the audience of who's reading the assessment and it's the individual themselves. So you need to avoid um, overuse of jargon and things that they're not going to understand but I do think that there's a way that you can use theory um, that's actually understandable as well um, so you can use just a couple of sentences to explain why you feel that it's directly relevant to that individual so for example I may consider a theory around grief and loss to consider why someone may be struggling with uh, the loss of control that they've got since acquiring a disability in later life and how that's impacting on some of the choices that they're making and how that's important to consider as part of the wider picture. So you can see how that's like a, a, a you, you sort of can use it in a way that would make sense to everyone um, and it's sort of a way of showing that you are um, informed by the, the background knowledge that you have. But a word of like caution around this that you know sometimes um, you have to make sure it's definitely relevant to the situation because you may have to justify it um, either to the person that's reading it or maybe in, in court and things like that. So all useful stuff anyway around um, assessments and I think there's loads of other things that we could touch on but I don't want to make this video too long so thank you.